Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Scabelli, and this is End Time Revival Ministries. My very special guest is Dr. Doug Wingate, and he is the founder of Life Christian University in Lutz, Florida. Dr. Wingate is a teacher of theology, and uh, Dr. Wingate, I want to thank you so much for uh, making time for being on the show. Uh, I greatly appreciate uh, you being here. My pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Dr. Wingate, I want to talk about, the show is going to be about the end time revival, and I know revival is uh, big, you know, in your heart, my heart too, but as I look at the world, um, I just, I, I believe we're living in Matthew 24. I see wars and rumors of war, and, and I believe it says in Psalms, why do the nations rage, and, and, and I just see so much prophecy uh, happening and coming true. Um, do, you, do you believe we're living at this time? Well, absolutely. You know, first thing we always do to know the indicators of where we're at in time is to go to the words of Jesus. Sure. And in Matthew 24, it's Jesus ministering, and uh, people always ask, uh, what would Jesus do? Uh, it's more important to know what He would say, what He did, what his plans are, how he thinks, you know, we need to know all of those things. And Jesus, when he was asked by his disciples, uh, what would be the, the indications, what would be the signs of the end of the age? And, uh, and so he began teaching them in Matthew 24. And uh, exactly those things that we saw, the beginning of sorrows, and uh, talked about those wars and rumors of wars. I believe since 9-11, we've entered into a whole different kind of war. So that makes it very interesting concerning the timeline that we live in as well. Uh, because now we have a war not between nations, but between uh, one religion who wants to take on everybody else who doesn't agree with them. And uh, so it's, it's very, very many parallels, uh, as you say, concerning the, the time and the day that we live in. Do you, do you believe this is the generation, or what does the word talk about a generation is that uh, we shall see the coming of the Lord? I mean, do you, do you think... Or can you see that the, the signs and, and, and the, the signs of times are, are birth pains that are happening, uh, not only to this nation, but around the world? Well, it absolutely is global, you know, because obviously God is dealing with a whole planet, His, mm -hmm. his creation and uh, the people that he planned on being his family for eternity. It's all human, humankind. Sure. Uh, the Bible tells us plainly, everybody knows John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. No indication that, you know, their life on other planets and Jesus had to go and die from planet to planet to planet, you know. Uh, no, humankind, God's family that he created in his image are, are on the planet. And, of course, uh, the things that we see happening uh, are happening all over the world. At the same time, we know that we, God created a very special thing. I believe he led people to America uh, to establish a nation that was based on desiring to serve the Lord according to the Word of God. And this nation was dedicated to God, and I believe that our, our uh, founding documents, the Declaration of Independence, our Constitution, they really kind of tie together. Uh, it was, those were, those were uh, covenant papers. There was a covenant that they wrote down with the Lord concerning uh, godly governance. And, uh, and then God has blessed this nation and used it to be the beacon light. At, no, no nation has taken more of the gospel around the rest of the world than the United States. So we can look at what God wants to do here and what He begins to do all over the earth and, and get an idea of where we're at in the, in the end, of, end of days. Dr. Wingate, I am really concerned with America. Uh, I believe that, uh, I believe we're financially sick. I also believe we're very, very spiritually sick. I believe uh, many people are departing from God, from what they see. I, I, I just see the abortion issue. I see the same-sex marriage issue, uh, the legal, uh, legalization of some um, drugs that is coming soon. Um, I just don't see um, this. I see this nation turning from the Lord. And, 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 and even some of our politicians, it seems like they are trying to get God at, off our dollar bill, out of society, and any nation that turns their back on Him, judgment will fall, no? Well, we do know that um, it's basically uh, an, an antichrist spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, John talked about antichrist spirits way back 2,000 years ago. Sure. That 
Uh, Satan was warring against the church and has all these years. Mm -hmm. But we see a great turn in America because uh, America had been at different times. There were great revivals and sure. great awakenings sure. and something like 80% of the people were all very committed Christians. Sure. Uh, those great revivals of uh, the past years. And so now we see an an not just people departing from the faith, we see an anti-Christian basically an anti-Christ spirit rising up yeah, yeah. where they want the Christians to shut up. They want us to not be seen or heard. And, uh, and, and they want, the, they call it freedom from religion. That's basically freedom to sin and uh, live any old way their conscience, you know, they're just d denying their conscience basically. Sure. <laughs> and so it, it is a different day than we've ever seen in uh, the history of the church in America. Sure. The, the Bible talks about an outpouring. Uh, where the Lord says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now, we spoke about in the, in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, I think there was um, um, like A.A. A. Allen, and, and there was uh, the other great, uh, Jack Coe, and then you had Oral Robertson. These guys were, were going across America. They, uh, massive miracles, uh, uh, recreative miracles. D do, you, do you see that happening again, and do you see it happening at, at a greater um, anointing? I believe we're going to see every, the, the elements of every revival that's ever happened in the last hundred years, yeah. 120 years sure. in this nation, yeah. uh, and all of them magnified and multiplied, wow. and all of them together, very intense. Sure. You know, we, we know that the, the basically the charismatic uh, uh, empowerment of the church wow. was you know, maybe held by just a remnant all the way through. Sure. And then in 1900, right at that very New Year's Eve time, sure. up in Topeka, Kansas, mm -hmm. the first girl, they were seeking what, how to get the power back in. And the first girl prayed in tongues at midnight on that night. And, and then, of course, there was the great Azusa Street revival. Sure. Sure. Uh, I know just in my lifetime, I was born in 1950, but hearing so much, and I didn't get saved till I was 23, but uh, I knew about Billy Graham being on the television all the time and Oral Roberts. I mean, they were on secular TV. There were no Christian stations, and they had huge audiences, and hundreds of thousands of people were being saved. And then we saw, of course, uh, that healing revival of the 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. And here was a bunch of preachers that were pastors. They believed in healing. They'd pray for people. Every now and then somebody would be healed. But now, all of a sudden, everybody they pray sure. for is being healed. Sure. And so... They didn't want to just keep it in their church. They launched out. They got tents. They traveled around the whole country. At one point in time, there were at least a hundred wow. of these tent evangelists crisscrossing the United States and people being healed everywhere. And then we follow that. We had a great charismatic renewal in the late 60s where in all kinds of churches, I mean, it didn't matter if it was a Christian church. It started really in sure. Notre Dame with the, with the Catholics and they, they got baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in other tongues, which is a uh, supernatural way according to the book sure. of Romans that sure. to be able to pray the perfect prayer sure. about everything because we don't know how to pray all the time uh -huh. and so they were praying the perfect prayer and great things were happening then we saw the word of faith revival brother Hagen came on the scene and God had shown him how faith works and he says teach my people faith and so he dedicated his life to doing that and and it was like a great revival of people learning the whole counsel of God's word and power being men manifestation people getting healed hmm. uh, getting prospered all kinds of great things happening sure, sure. and then we've seen since then <clears throat> another great revival brother Hagen was very much a part of that hmm. he used to do those what he called Holy Ghost meetings here you go. and Rodney Howard Brown right here in town a good friend of mine yes, sir. he uh, God began using him and great joy mm -hmm. just filled mm -hmm. people's lives, you know, sure. and, and uh, it, it just, and in that environment sure. of great joy sure. and the, the very manifest presence of God's glory, mm -hmm. people were healed, their mm -hmm. lives were transformed, marriages were healed. Sure. And, and so you take all of those great moves of God and compact them, multiply it, and then spread it around the whole world. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to see right in the same time we're seeing all these bad things happen everywhere. Sure. <laughs> And the Lord hasn't forgotten about Israel, right? No, absolutely. Uh, and Israel, of course, is, is basically, uh, he uses the Israeli calendar, the Jewish calendar, mm -hmm. as the calendar that he's referring to sure. concerning these things. Now, you know, uh, we still have 365 and a quarter days, you know, that make up a whole year. Sure. Uh, but they have different time frames for things. And so when he was talking in the Old Testament about these different things, he was talking about the calendar that they have. And of course, we use a Gregorian calendar and there were mistakes made. And so it's a, a little bit off on some things. And, uh, but the, the primary thing that God uses Israel for, I mean, he's got a, a special covenant with them sure. to, I believe, 
cause later on, we see in the book of Revelation that 144,000 sure, uh, sure. people are suddenly going to be preaching the gospel mm -hmm. and God will save Israel by simply them all, at, for the most part, sure. maybe 99%, all turning to, to the Messiah, the one true Messiah who's already come and is going to be coming again. Sure. And so there'll be great things He's going to do in Israel. Yeah. And um, But primarily we see, again, we can look at the, the things that the Lord has said in the mm -hmm. Bible concerning a mm -hmm. timeline of things sure. uh, and, and recognize those things. It's interesting to know this year, 2015, is the year of Jubilee, yes. according to that. So we can expect yes. great things to happen this year. And I believe much of that's going to be a real launching out in revival. That's awesome. Do you believe that, um, according to Matthew 24, um, is it necessary for uh, the rebuilding of the temple <laughs> or, or has this been fulfilled with um, General Titus when he destroyed the, um, the temple in 70 A.D., the, the great Roman general? And then there was another um, gentleman by Anicus Epiphanes. Uh, he was a Syrian king who uh, desecrated the temple. He, he sacrificed a pig. Mm -hmm. And um, do, you, do you believe the temple uh, must be rebuilt? Or what would you well, on that? Well, one of the things is looking at the book of Revelation. Oh. Uh, for almost 1900 years, the church had a completely different picture concerning end times, okay. and they knew that it was a very picturesque, very allegorical, sure, spiritual sure, book. Sure. <clears throat> and um, but then, uh, when Schofield happened to write his mm -hmm. uh, his opinion of you know all these dispensations sure. of time and what he believed, yes, uh, then we we'll see the church started seeing it you know in a different way, and they were saying, well. We don't even offer a course of uh, eschatology at our university because there's, the opinions are all over the place. We need to know that those are basically it's a minor doctrine. But people have tried to use that to scare people so that we can get them saved. But it's the love of God that draws a person mm -hmm. to repentance. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's why I believe that even though if we are going to be experiencing many of the things over again from the book of Revelation, uh, that we'll see so many good things happening at the same time that we need to tell people, don't fear. Just come into the kingdom of God. He's going to protect you from all the bad things. Mm -hmm. uh, but we could look at that and say, well, if that is still uh, what he's referring to is, is, is a desolation of the temple where mm -hmm. it was there mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I say because the foundation is still there. Sure. You can go there today where the excavation, you walk down to the uh, to the old temple wall and, and they, people go down there to pray and there's walls, big stones of Solomon's temple and on top of that is Herod's temple. Uh, but on top of that whole footprint of where the temple was is the mosque of Omar, mm -hmm. which is again, okay, a Muslim uh, mosque and I believe that could qualify even to be this abomination of desolation that's standing there where the temple was. Should we, um, <coughs> should we um, fear, like say, um, the rise of Antichrist or the mark of the beast that is uh, seems to be coming. Well, again, whether or not that's what it means, that those things are future, I think there's a whole lot more evidence actually mm -hmm. that it was mostly revelation was fulfilled mm -hmm. during that time. But mm -hmm. we still look at the other things that mm -hmm. the Bible points out. There is going to be a rapture of the church. Yes, sir. And there is going to be God's protection of the believers sure. out of any kind of uh, total annihilation. Yeah. God loves the world. Uh, but he loves his church yes. and he's not going to let the church be overrun by a caliphate. Sure. He's not going to let America be overrun yeah. uh, by godlessness and antichrist. We're going to see a revival in this land. Mm -hmm. We know over in, in, in Hosea 6 mm -hmm. and uh, in Joel 2, mm -hmm. that's where it talks about God doing a revival mm -hmm. And he talks about it as a, as a rain, mm. a rain of his presence and his glory. And there's going to be a former rain and a latter rain combined together right. all at the same right. time. Right. And so God's got great things in store. He's not done with America, believe me. <laughs> well, thank God because of America. It's in trouble right now. There's no question about it, but we can see a return. But you, but you must admit, in Matthew 24, um, you, you're aware or you do see the signs uh, that are happening, and they're sure. happening quicker. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, you know, earthquakes, war just doesn't seem to want to go away. Um, the rise of a, a false religion um, just the love of many uh, departing uh, mm -hmm. from the world, um, the, the rise of same-sex marriage and, and, and things that are uh, just not pleasing to the Lord. Well, you know, there, uh, people say, though, these are uh, kind of social issues yeah. and values issues, yeah. and the reality is a lot of people don't have any idea yeah. that there are so many things happening that there's a point in time, I'm sure, in God's mind where He says, enough is enough. Sure. Jesus, it's about time to do this great revival and 
Uh, and of course, there are indicators through the Word that we're really in that time. Sure. And we do know that uh, the Lord has given us some of these indicators from, uh, from Matthew 24. And we look at that and we realize, my goodness, we are celebrating the time and the day of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sure. We are celebrating all of these things, anti-Christ, anti-religion, yeah. uh, anti-Christianity is really what it is. Yeah, yeah. People are not anti-religion, they're just anti-Christianity. Sure. Big shift. Sure. And John was the one who first spoke about anti-Christ, but sure. he says the anti-Christ spirits, there. he says there's many anti-Christs yeah. already, yeah. and there's an anti-Christ spirit. We see that rising up sure. bigger today, which again is an indication sure. we're in the very last of the last days. I think the Apostle Paul said there are many voices in the world, and I think John said there are many antichrists in, right. in the world. I I uh, I am very uh, I'm very concerned for America. I mean, uh, when you when you look at these old YouTube videos of Jack Ho and, and A. A. Allen, I mean, um, I believe people are are thirsty, and, and they're not really they don't know how to. Uh, to get it, to, to get the anointing, no? Well, absolutely, but you know, uh, there's a number of things that make people kind of desperate. We know after 9-11, all the churches were sure. filled up for a sure. few weeks, you know, yeah, but yeah. It's, so it's not the negative things that really uh, make the big deal, but unless mm -hmm. uh, they're always there. You know, this yeah. change in our insurance, uh, people's faith has been in the, what I call the modern sickness industry, because I'm not real big on all the drugs. I think they do fabulous with modern surgery and, oh, and uh, you oh. know, uh, uh, critical care stuff, but um, but we see what's happening. Of course, uh, people have had trust in all of this, sure. Form, and we're about ready to see all of the 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 insurance industry and the whole medical system collapse because as much as they want to make it available to everybody, they're cutting the legs out from underneath it, and so people might become desperate again. And when you see a, a, a revival in the church, what God always does is a revival in the church. He brings the church back to great life, mm -hmm. great excitement, real moves of God, and then there's an awakening sure. uh, out there among the populace that sure. have been outside of church. They've either rejected the Lord or just don't know. They've never really understood the sure. whole gospel. And so when people don't have insurance and they don't have a way to get health care, yeah, yeah. they may come back to the church because they're going to hear there's all these miracles happening sure. like in the revival days of the sure. 40s and 50s. Uh, Dr. Wingate, how, how important is praying uh, for, for um, this to uh, manifest? Well, what Jesus was always saying, and I believe that we're always going to have a prayer revival. Every other great revival, uh -huh. there's always been a prayer revival that preceded it. Sure. Uh, Jesus talks about when he was telling his disciples that we come to the near of this end, he says, watch. Well, yeah. that means pray. He's yeah. talking about watching. In some places, the Bible does say watch and pray. But he was talking about be very vigilant in sure. your prayer. Sure. So I believe he has called up this great intercessory sure. army sure. that's going to usher in this great end time revival. Sure. And then we're going to see it all unfold uh, through the church first. It's more important to know what's happening spiritually even than to know what's happening sure. in the natural that parallels yeah. what's in the Bible. Because the Lord will reveal to his church the timeline on all these things. Dr. Wingate, the um the Bible doesn't really say rapture, but it does say catching away, a, a catching away, a, a great taking away. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've studied all kinds of ways. You know, pre, uh, mid. You know, going through the uh, the, the tribulation, and uh, it, it's kind of confusing. Uh, say we do get pulled pulled away first. Now you're going to have a lot of people left over. I mean, is the Holy Spirit going to be here? Can these people? Can these people be saved? Well, obviously the Holy Spirit is throughout the entire universe because uh, it was by the Holy Spirit the Lord created the yes, finite sir. known universe. It seems infinite to us because it's so so vast, and yet God is bigger than all that. He's sure. outside of all that. So the sure. Holy Spirit fills the entire thing. And of course, people can be born again whenever they believe in their heart that sure. God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. They'll be born again. And uh, so they're going to, our Bibles, when we get raptured, because mm -hmm. it talks about us being caught up to be with the Lord in yes, the sir. air, yes, uh, our Bibles are still going to be here. <laughs> all these television programs that people have recorded preaching the gospel, they're all going to be available. And I believe that's what's going to happen is there are going to be so many Christians. As a matter of fact, people wonder, well, how many Christians will actually go? You know, that's also covered in Matthew 20, 24, over 40 through uh, 44. Uh, it, it talks about one being at the mill sure. grinding and one's taken and one is left. Sure. And it goes on, it says one and one, one sure. and one. To me, that's 50%. You uh -huh. know, so if we get another 1.5 billion people saved, and God sure. could do that in 10 years. Sure. You know, we could see that kind of revival. I think that's what we're going to see. Sure. Uh, at that point in time when we're at 50-50, <laughs> 
saved and unsaved, the Lord Jesus can come back. Uh, but after we go, as you say, there will be people here, but God's going to make a way. Sure. And so many of them are just going to suddenly wake up. Oh, my goodness, those yeah. Christians were right. We know they told us all those you know, movies that showed that, you know, they were all going to be gone. <laughs> that was true. We need to go to the Word and find out, and they'll just get born again, and all those 144,000 uh, Billy Grahams that are going to be in, in, throughout Israel, you know, there are going to be a lot of people saved. <laughs> going to be a lot of people saved. Praise be to the living God. Do you, do you believe that, um, do you believe this will be a worldwide uh, revival? Well, absolutely. I mean, anything God does, because it's His people he created humans to be his family or created in the image of God and uh, and so he's going to deal with the entire world at the same time I still believe the United States will be at the very front of this whole great revival yes, sir. Yes, sir. and uh, and it will happen people will say well did he give any real indicators that you know this would be the very last of days you know well Jesus also taught in, in uh, uh, Matthew 24 all about uh, the indicator of the, he says, understand the parable of the fig tree. Sure. And most Bible scholars believe the fig tree represents Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, they were scattered abroad, didn't have their own nation. They sure. were controlled, of course, by uh, England. And then when they gave sure. them uh, sure. independence again, yeah. so the uh, UN recognized them as a nation again in 1948. And uh, so Jesus said, this generation would not pass away. So if that's what the indication is, it would be this generation, but some people thought it was going to be a 40-year generation. Mm -hmm. However, we go over to Genesis 1, uh, verse, uh, uh, chapter 15, that is, uh, uh, we see there that um, we, there was a conversation between Abraham and God, and he was telling him about his descendants. Mm -hmm. He says, they will be in captivity uh, for 400 years, mm -hmm. but in the fourth generation, I'm going to bring them out. We know mm -hmm. Israel was in captivity in, mm -hmm. in Egypt for 400 years, and According to God, uh, a generation is 100 years. Mm -hmm. So we go from 1948, if that's a date, all the way to uh, spring forward 100, 100 years, so that's 2048. Mm -hmm. However, Israel didn't consider themselves complete mm -hmm. uh, and really flourishing until 1967. That mm -hmm. six-day war when suddenly they had Jerusalem again. And so at 100 years to that, so 2067, good possibility. Mm -hmm. We look at the pattern that was there with uh, Jesus being mm -hmm. in the earth for three mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. In reality, it spanned three days, but it was less than 48 hours, so mm -hmm. it was like two days. Mm -hmm. Then over in 1 Peter, Peter is talking about the Lord's return and the end of days, and he says, uh, with the Lord, understand, one, year is a thousand, one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. And so it could be that exactly 2,000 years from the time Jesus departed and was seated at the right hand of the Father is when He'll come back. Mm -hmm. Now, Bible scholars disagree about mm -hmm. when Jesus was born because mm -hmm. they've got all these things, mm -hmm. but most of them agree about when Jesus w ascended to the Father, and that mm -hmm. was in the year 30 A.D., mm -hmm. spring forward 2,000 years, and that's 2030 A.D. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, it falls on uh, May the 30th, mm -hmm. and so that's only 15 years away. Mm -hmm. So we've got any one of these potentials, you know, yeah. uh, 2030, 2048, 2067. Uh, I like Billy Brim. She says, well, just go ahead and pick a date. Maybe there'll be a prize for somebody who got it right. I'd say, you know, maybe I'm going to uh, name 2067 because at that point in time, I'd be 117 years old if I'm still here. And uh, if I am, who will care? I will not care if I was wrong and I got it wrong. Who cares? Calls me a false prophet. But... <laughs> <laughs> what the Lord does with you 120 years. I, that's the, the, the promise, you know. My, my spirit will not always strive with man over there in Genesis 6, but his years shall be 120, and I believe that's the, the, the potential. You may be watching this show right now, and you may, you may be uh, saying to yourself, I'm too great a sinner to come to a holy God who is righteous and who is pure. But I'm telling you right now that God says, just come to me. Come to me as you are. I remember Billy Graham said that. Uh, and he, just, he just wants you to come to him as you are. Look, man, none of us are perfect. We, we, we all have sinned. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. But his love and his mercy and his blood and the finished work of the cross will cleanse you of all unrighteousness, and you will be recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. But you must believe and ask him in. Dr. Wingate, we have about four minutes left. Can you give a altar call to the people, please? Absolutely. I just want to speak to everybody there. If you've been watching this program and you've never made a commitment to the Lord Jesus, understand what uh, 
Paul the Apostle was talking about in Romans 10, 9 and 10. He says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you can be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you see, just believing in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead is not enough. You have to take that second step and confess Jesus as your own personal Lord. And I'm inviting you to do that in this real short, simple prayer that I'm going to pray. And if you believe the words that I'm praying, pray that with me in your heart and you will be born again in this very hour. And God will wash you clean of everything and give you a whole new life in Him. That's what's important, is living with the Lord and having your, uh, the assurity of your place in heaven for eternity. So Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for all of these people and I ask that this would be the cry of their heart and they would pray this. That Lord, I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I confess now Jesus is now the Lord of my life. And Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sin and come into my heart. I make you the Lord of my life. And I thank you that I shall live for eternity with the Father in heaven and with you and be filled with the Holy Spirit all of my days. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. If you said that prayer, please contact this ministry, Dr. Scavelli at iCloud.com. I, I really want to know if you uh, if you said that prayer uh, we need to know we need to know the fruit that we are gathering because the Lord is coming the Lord is coming very soon and um, you need to make this heart decision you may say I have a lot of time no man knows the hour of his death I mean you have to be ready at all times because I believe the Apostle well Jesus said to watch and you have to watch and be ready because death comes as a thief in the night. And if you don't have him in your heart, you will go to hell. Or you might go to the great tribulation. You must ask Jesus into your heart. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Dr. Wingate, I want to uh, thank you kindly for being on the show. Uh, it's my, my pleasure. And can I throw something else in here? Sure. I would like to ask and invite all of you not only just to email and uh, let Dr. Scavelli know uh, if this program has impacted your life, especially if you've been born again you prayed that prayer, but I want to invite you to partner with this ministry because it's very vital for ministry to go forward. So if you're a believer and you already believe that God's got an anointing on this program, He's going to use it. It's got a special audience. Then I ask you to partner by sending in a contribution to this ministry to keep it on the air, keep it healthy. And at the same time, when this ministry gets that fruit, when people get born again or their lives get ministered to, you're a partner in that. There's a return on that. And you get to get a return that God looks for you to be able to give you a financial return or a blessing or a spiritual return or a blessing or some other uh, act that he does to maybe to heal your marriage or heal any other part of your life or your body. And so partnering with the right ministries is important to be able to get the return on your life that you need as well. Thank you so much. We shall see you again. Dr. Wingate, thank you so much. You're welcome, sir.